Hello everyone my name is Divyansh Bajala and today i have got an opportunity to speak on the topic layout and planting systems but before starting i would like to thank my course instructor dr prashant bakshi sir for giving me this opportunity the sub topics which i will be covering today are layout its overview definition purpose factors affecting principles components of layout and things required plant systems its overview calculation of number of plants types and at last method of layout talking about layout layout is the technique of planting the crops in a proper system there are different methods of planting and thus different layouts the plan showing the arrangements of plants in orchard is known as the layout any methods of layout should aim at providing maximum number of plants and proper maintenance of space for easy cultural operations in orchard it refers to an optimum arrangement of different facilities including man machine equipment material field etc it is basically the blueprint in which every items equipments place like storeroom tool room production area various functions processes are prearranged and pre-established before the actual preparation implication as well as production of field for its maximum efficiency with least loss and expenditure of the place it can also be done on previously established field for its improvement and enhancement now why do we need layout we need layout for determining the actual positions or change in design introduction of new product or variety change in demand frequent accidents new safety standards and also for the field extension now the factors affecting layout factor affecting layout are proper drainage no water stagnation soil depth suitability of soil its fertility nature of subsoil type of material type of product skilled and unskilled workers handling water quality and machinery some principles to keep in mind while laying out an orchard minimum travel transport and movement sequential setup optimum usage of every component in the field like area storage etc safety of crops plants and other measures introduction Layout is done to locate the actual location of trees, roads, water channel and buildings in the orchard. The mistakes made in the initial stage of the orchard establishment can cause loss throughout the life of an orchard and it is very difficult or impossible to correct them later. It is hence essential that the layout of an orchard should be carefully planned and executed to facilitate proper care to the orchard. A well considered layout plan should be followed for planting an orchard. The plan should provide optimum number of trees per unit area consistent with sufficient space for proper development of each tree and convenience in various orchard operations such as interculturing spraying and harvesting seeking advice of the expert is always recommended Now the components of layout first one is roads straight roads of 10 to 12 meters should be constructed at right angle to each other for easy movement of carrying any garden machinery the road should be given gentle slopes on either sides so as to drain off excess water now buildings the buildings including the owners residence laborers quarters and sheds should be located fairly close to the public road or in center of the site or near the water source in the site the area necessary for construction should be left unplanted even if the construction is delayed position of water source if the source of irrigation is going to be developed it should be done before planting as the tree require water as soon as they are planted fruit trees that require irrigation should be planted too close to the source of water while the rain fed ones away from it bore well a bore well is a deep narrow hole drilled into the ground from which water is drawn through a pipe and pump The borewell should be located as far as possible at the highest point to facilitate easy distribution of water by gravity at least cos. Fencing. Fence to prevent distribution of trees from stray cattle and also to protect orchard from dust passers or thieves it is necessary to provide some kind of fencing to all sides of the garden. 
they should be done preferably before planting the orchard it may be prepared by using thorny bushes but they are not satisfactory since they require frequent repairs and replacement barbed wire fencing is very good but its initial cost is rather very high the best protection can be made by building a live fence as no investment is needed for these live fences except proper watering and maintenance in summer months some of the thorny plants like carissa carandus make very good live fence wind breaks the exposure of orchard to wind increases the loss of moisture both by increasing the rate of transpiration as well as surface evaporation the high winds also cause damage to the fruit plants by blowing off branches and fruits the fruit set is also reduced as wind causes stigmatic secretion and this results in failure of proper fertilization the trees commonly used as wind breaks are eucalyptus casuarina equisetiforia etc whereas for fruit crops with low height like banana or papaya wind breaks of sesbinia aegyptica is grown on the southern or the western side of the plantation the wind breaks trees sometimes may compete with orchard trees for soil water and food to prevent this competition a trench may be dug about 0.9 to 1.2 meters deep and about 3 meters away from the row of wind break trees and all their roots in the trench may be cut away short of root trees may be planted in the foreground and taller trees further away such graduation facilitates better watching another is duration of ripening the fruit that ripen at the same time should be planted in a condition compact block high fertile area of the orchard should be devoted to more paying fruit crops there are some things required for laying out an orchard these are ropes poles pegs cross staff measuring tape and planting board as you can see those in pictures now different systems of planting the planting of an orchard include various types of systems which are square system rectangular system hexagonal system triangular system diagonal system and contour system out of all before mentioned system square hexagonal and diagonal systems are most commonly used in jammu province diagonal system of planting is also known as quincenic system before doing planting of orchard we should know how to calculate the number of plants to be planted the formula to calculate the number of plants in square and rectangular system is area upon row to row distance multiplied by plant to plant distance square system in square system the area of row to row and plant to plant is same the plants are right angled to each other every unit of four plants forms a square this is the most common system followed for planting of orchards and easy for layout this facilitates interculture in both the directions after the orchard is planted square system layout in field for actual layout in the field one boundary line is chosen and along with this line a base line is fixed then first line is made at the half of the proposed distance parallel to the base line constructing a right angle triangle in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 5 draws in a second line the line of trees are drawn perpendicular to the base line it is so fixed that lines meeting it are parallel to the field the position of trees in the base line is marked with pegs from these pegs perpendicular lines should be marked with the help of cross marks the plant position can be best marked on all four sides and finally in the field by running strings length and breadth wise and by putting pegs at the cross rectangular system in rectangular system the distance from plant to plant and row to row is not the same the trees are planted in straight parallel rows this is very good system as it is easy to understand layout and allows interculture in two direction hexagonal system in hexagonal system the trees are planted in each corner of equilateral triangle this is therefore also known as equilateral triangle system here six trees forms a hexagon with the seven tree in the center it is employed where the land is expensive thus accommodating 50% more plants per unit area than the square system the trees in this system however have a tendency to crowd after a few years the cultivation can be carried out in all three directions the number of plants in this system are 50% more than the square system
triangular system in this system the trees are planted similar to the square system except that in the even numbered rows are midway between instead of opposite of those in the odd rows in this system however every second row will accommodate one plant less than in the square system though the rows are equidistant diagonal system it is laid exactly like the square system except that the fifth temporary tree also known as the filler plant is planted in the center of the every unit of four permanent plants the filler is uprooted when the permanent plant starts bearing they yield some crops before permanent trees come into bearing the filler makes crops cultivation difficult many times the farmer or grower often delays their removal and this adversely affects the performance of the permanent plantation this system accommodates 10% more plants than square system contour system it is followed in the hilly areas where the slopes are steep trees are planted as a uniform slope and usually a triangle to the slope with the view of reducing the loss of top soil due to soil erosion its planting is done as in a square system the marking should be done from lowest level to the top methods of layout for laying out an orchard according to square system a base line is first established and the position of trees are marked along this line putting wooden stakes in the ground another base line at right angle to the first base line is then marked along with the other edge of the field with the help of carpenter square or a cross staff the right angle all can also be drawn with the help of measuring tape one end of this tape is fixed at 3 meter distance from the corner along the first line and the tape is then stretched along the second base line for a distance of 4 meter the diagonal distance between these two points should be 5 meter the wooden stakes are put in the ground at the desired distance along the second lines all four rows are thus established and staked three men one putting the pegs in the field and other to correcting alignment while moving along the base line can easily lay out the whole field for laying out of an orchard according to the triangular system a base line is set on one side of the field as in the square system large triangle with a ring in each corner is used the sides of this triangle are equal to the distance to be kept of the plants in the orchard Two of these rings are placed on the stakes of the base line. The position of the third ring indicates the position of the plant in the second row. This row then is used as a base line. The whole area is laid out in similar manner.